good morning welcome in this presentation we will be presenting a quick overview of an ideation that we have the architecture and more about a deep dive of the architecture the use cases that we have and how it can enable our enterprise customers and different other users to use this application service sentinel and use the use cases i am partha i lead the solution development for next generation technologies in open source communities we are active contributors to OpenStack, OpenDaylight, and Open vSwitch. Along with me, I have Swati. Hello. Uh, hello. A very good morning to all of you. I'm Swati, and I'm a solution architect from TCS. I'm working on OpenStack. So our today's topic for discussion is Service Sentinel. This is basically a mobile application that deals with the critical OpenStack operations for the OpenStack users on the go. So uh, to provide a heads up, what we have for you today is, in the first section, we are going to show you what are the day-to-day -day operations of OpenStack and what are the OpenStack users still missing. So we will draw an insight into what is still there in OpenStack that is still not supported for the users while mobile. In the second section, we will take a deep dive into the viable service sentinel use cases, the technical architecture that it covers, along with the different dashboard it has for different kinds of OpenStack users. In the third section, we demo day in the life of a user, showcasing what are the key activities of OpenStack that can be performed via Sur Service Sentinel for the OpenStack users. So uh, to kick off, let's take a look at uh, what are our OpenStack users doing today. So a diverse variety of OpenStack users are working on tools, they are working on OpenStack frameworks, product suites, and etc. Depending upon the kind of work that the users perform, they are uh, primarily classified into three main categories. So as you all know, category A users will be the ones who are basically dealing with the infrastructure operations. They are performing different kinds of monitoring activities via different dashboards, OpenStack tools, etc. And these users are also dealing with the scaling request depending upon the criticality of the request. Uh, they, uh, the infrastructure users are also responsible for the migration activities across sites depending upon the thresholds of the resources. The second category of users that we have here are basically the ones who are dealing with the CI-CD operations, that is the continuous integration and continuous development. So as per different release cycles, we have development activities, we have release management activities, and we have deployment tasks that have to be performed on different target hosts. So um, a DevOps user will be able to perform such tasks via our application. The third category of users we have in OpenStack are the general users. As the name suggests, these users are the ones who are using the services that are provided by different OpenStack service providers. By service providers, we mean here uh, they are the business people or the enterprise specific people who are uh, responsible for planning, strategizing different OpenStack product suits and services. Moving to the next slide. Uh, we name category A users in Service Sentinel as a lab infra people. So as we just discussed, the lab infra people are the ones who are managing the monitoring activities, performing horizontal scaling, vertical scaling, and migration across sites. So there are certain key challenges that a lab infra user faces today while on the go. He's not able to perform certain tasks, which are critical to him. For example, we have, can he actually monitor the various sites across locations on the go? Or can he uh, monitor or address different kind of service requests or scaling requests while he's mobile? Or the third challenge for him can be if he wants to perform a scaling or migration activities while on the move. So this is, these are the key challenges that a lab infra user faces today. Moving to the next category of users, uh, we call them as the DevOps users. As the name suggests, these people are the ones who are basically engaged in CI-CD tasks. So here also we have three main challenges that a DevOps user faces today. So can he actually monitor or trigger the different kinds of build requests of critical OpenStack bugs or blueprints while he is mobile? The second challenge for him is he wants to monitor different build 
processes and on which tool the build process is happening right now. So there might be certain failures and he wants to deep dive into the build process to check out where and all the root cause lies. This will enable a DevOps user to further take actions to resolve a particular issue. And the third challenge can be when he has to perform certain uh, releases on the target host while on the move. So these are the key challenges for a DevOps user today. And coming to the last family of users in OpenStack, these are the general users. So here also we have certain challenges. As a general user, I want to be updated with certain uh, activities of OpenStack services. I want to be updated with OpenStack vendors and categories of product suits that they provide. As a challenge I have is when I want to request certain feature sets or I want to order a product, OpenStack service from vendor XYZ. So I want to I should be able to do that from a mobile application itself. I want to see the list. I request for a particular OpenStack product, and it, there you go. The second uh, challenge can be when I feel like comparing the different OpenStack services that are provided by different OpenStack vendors. And I just want to fire an add to compare command so that I can fetch out my results. The third key challenge can be when I am subscribed to certain OpenStack product features and I want to receive notifications for that particular product or a vendor. So this will also provide a win-win situation for a service provider because he can enable or keep the users abreast with the OpenStack services that are still going on today. Moving to the next slide. So boom, this gives a view of Service Sentinel. That is how an on-the-go user will be able to access the OpenStack critical operations on the go. Uh, this solution will enable all the OpenStack users to get rid of their main pain areas. And the modularity and extensibility of this application will make it interoperable to work with different enterprise tools as well. This is applicable, as we discussed, for the Lab Infra user, the Le DevOps users, and the general users of OpenStack. So our final aim to achieve via Service Sentinel is to allow any time and anywhere access of the OpenStack critical operations on the go for any kind of OpenStack user. To summarize, we discussed about the different kinds of main-to-main day-to-day activities of Service Sentinel. Okay. So we now will do a deep dive into the top level features of Service Sentinel. What are the key features that it provides today that makes it unique? The first one being on the go. That is, it allows any time and anywhere access of the OpenStack operations to the user. The second one being collaboration tools. That is, it can be made interoperable with various OpenStack collaboration tools as well. So today, various OpenStack tools are evolving, be it uh, uh, public, be it open source, be it proprietary, or there are certain license tools as well. So the extensibility of this application will enable it to interwork with uh, tools via adapters. The third key feature set is it is an extensible framework. What we mean by that is it can be extended with existing enterprise solutions that are existing in today's world and which are otherwise only available via CLI or web-based interfaces. The fourth key feature set is it can enable the services uh, provided for the DevOps users and the lab infra people to carry out the mundane tasks. The fifth key feature set is it, it can be enhanced with, for the de, uh, general users as well so that they can use the services that are provided by the service providers of OpenStack. Last but not the least, this is customizable and deployable. That means it can be tailored and customized according to the needs of different enterprise networks. So to summarize, we have discussed about the day-to-day -day operations of OpenStack users, uh, what are the users missing, what are the top-level features of Service Sentinel, and let's take a deep dive into the architecture of Service Sentinel. In Service Sentinel, we target three main use cases for the Lab Infra users, and they are the remote monitoring of uh, data centers or sites across locations. The second one can be a lab infra user will be able to perform scale up and scale down activities of the resources 
across locations depending upon certain KPIs. And the third one can be when a lab infra user will be able to manually trigger the migration activities. So for example, here I can state as in daytime the sites are used to the maximum potential. And in lean time hours, there is always a scope of reducing the power consumption. So a lab infra user will be able to perform these migration tasks so that the VMs can be consolidated and can be used to the maximum potential via Server Sentinel. Uh, below we have different uh, dashboards that relate to different tasks and we will see that in the forthcoming demo. Moving to the next slide before we deep dive into every uh, use case of the OpenStack user, we will discuss in detail about the Server Sentinel framework and the high-level architectural overview. So here we have four main tiers specifically. The first tier being the presentation tier, where the users can receive requests. Uh, the users can be lab infra, the DevOps, or the general users. And this presentation tier interacts with the northbound interface or the NBI layer through a certain REST APIs that we have written. The NBI layer uh, consists of Sentinel-specific or vendor-specific APIs that perform the different tasks on the controller or the Sentinel core layer. The Sentinel core layer consists of various components that are targeted when a lab infra user or a DevOps user, et cetera, perform certain kind of activity. And we will discuss that in detail in the forthcoming demo. The next is the Sentinel agents tier. So here we have certain agents that are doing different kinds of jobs depending upon the activity. For example, we have the monitoring agent that is looking over to the monitoring task of hosts, VMs, resources, and so on. The second is the tool agent here, which is basically uh, leveraging different kinds of OpenStack tools or the third-party tools that are used for performing the tasks for the lab infra or the DevOps user. The next one is the message broker that is being used to streamline the communication between the Sentinel core tier and the base level APIs. And the last one being the DB connector, which is responsible to fire DB specific commands on different vendor databases. Along with these uh, agents, we have the lower API layer as well, which consists of public APIs, private APIs, and third party tool APIs. Now let's take a look at the deep dive architecture for Service Sentinel lab infra users. As we discussed, the Service Sentinel architecture will remain the same, only the components will change with respect to the task that a lab infra user performs. So here the Sentinel core layer will consist of four main components. The first one being the resource manager, which is basically used for tracking the resources and updating the records of the resources pre and post migration and scaling activities. The second is the workflow manager. This comes into picture when different uh, user requests come up on the dashboards and the processed responses are sent on the respective dashboards. So the workflow manager will also be responsible uh, when uh, there are certain notifications coming up from different enterprise networks as well. The third one being the scheduler. So scheduler is a component that is scheduling different kinds of scaling requests and different kinds of migration requests across the sites and also depending upon the priority of the request. And the last one is the load balancer. So load balancer is tracking different resource APIs to distribute the workload and the traffic that is driven by different kinds of servers and the service requests. Let's move to the next slide. Here uh, we can see what kind of APIs uh, we are leveraging here and what kind of tools we are using in this current release of Service Sentinel for the lab infra users. Some of these APIs listed here are the resource APIs that is used for gathering or updating the resource records, the silometer API that we are using here for the meter list and the sample list records, Grafana is the tool that we are using for different kinds of monitoring activities, and it has various kinds of dashboards. For scaling and migration, we are uh, engaging the APIs of a TCS in-house framework, that is NFV Concerto. And lastly, as we explained, this tool can be extendable with different enterprise networks as well. So we are planning to integrate it with other third-party tools like Ibana and Logstash. 
So we discussed about the lab infra user use cases, the architecture for a lab infra user, and the different kinds of APIs. Now uh, let's take a look at how the logic flow happens for a lab infra user when he performs different tasks from a mobile application. The first sequence shows how a migration or a monitoring activity is happening from the dashboard for a lab infra user. So these are the key uh, functions that are taking place to, you, to actually fulfill the scenario of monitoring of the sites. The second scenario is when a user is performing the migration activity across the sites. So this kind of workflow happens when he's performing migration to reduce the carbon footprint. And the third sequence comes into picture when a critical service request comes into the queue of a lab infra user and he has to fulfill that request. So the third is for scaling up or down the resources. Moving to the next category of users, we have the DevOps users. So these users are the ones who are basically dealing with the CI CD task and equivalently important is to get the releases deployed on different testbed environments. The main use cases that we are targeting for a DevOps user in Service Sentinel are to remotely monitor different kinds of uh, service requests or the build activities that are taking place. The second use case can be he can uh, uh, track the different build processes that are happening on different tools. And also, he will be able to uh, perform the root cause investigation of where and all the requests are failing, where are the block requests, and what applicable action he can take to resolve a particular issue. The third use case is when he allows the deployment of a created package on different target hosts. Moving to the next slide. Here we present uh, an architectural overview of Service Sentinel for da uh, DevOps users specifically. So the layout will remain the same. That is the framework for a service sentinel. The sentinel core layer will now deal with only two main components here. That is the build manager and the release manager. So as the DevOps user are mainly engaged in the building processes, the build manager here would deal with the uh, components that are involved in the performing the build request of different packages or releases. This manager will in the end, forward the details of the packages or the releases to the release manager. And lastly, uh, since a DevOps user's primary task is to perform the deployment of the releases on different target hostbed environments, the release manager component will come into picture. So this is uh, primarily responsible for creating the releases from the build packages and getting these releases deployed on different environments. After we have discussed about the architecture in detail for a DevOps user, we have the different APIs that we are leveraging in the current release of Service Sentinel for a DevOps user. And some of the tools that we are using here are Git and Garrett APIs for tracking the repository changes, the Jenkins API that we are using for the build processes, Heat and Zero Meter we are basically using for gathering the meter records and performing the automated deployments. And it can also be extended with third-party enterprise tools as well. For example, uh, we are planning to integrate it with Docker's containers, LXC, Ansible, uh, Zool, Notepool, etc. Moving to the next slide. Uh, this gives an overview of the different dashboards we have for a DevOps user on a mobile application. So we will discuss this in detail in the last demo. Coming to the last family of users, that is the general users in Service Sentinel. So as we discussed, the general users are the ones who are using the services that are offered by the service providers of OpenStack. The three main use cases that we are targeting for a general user of uh, Service Sentinel are Firstly, he can deep dive into the vendor specific catalogs. He can check out what are the different vendors available in OpenStack world and what are the different kinds of services or the product suites that they provide. Second one, he can have a comparative readout. That is, he can compare and filter the different OpenStack services that are provided by different service providers. And thirdly, he can keep the 
it is like the solution can keep the users notified and updated with the uh, services that are provided by the providers. So this will be a win-win situation for the service provider itself because he can keep the users updated with all the OpenStack services that are available in his enterprise. Moving to the architecture overview of a general user in detail, uh, the basic framework will remain the same, only the Sentinel core components will change here. So the workflow manager is usually required for processing the requests and the responses. Then comes the services module, which is basically dealing with uh, managing different kinds of OpenStack provider services and also performing a comparative study of the different OpenStack services that are provided. The next comes the policy control module, which comes into picture uh, when a uh, general user requests for a certain policy from a service provider. And a service provider can perform a feasibility check via this component so that he can enable or disable a particular service for the general user. So um, in all, we have discussed about what are the users missing today, what are the day-to-day -day operations of OpenStack, what are the high-level service sentinel features that a user can use on the go. Now let's take a look at day in the life of a user where uh, we have a recorded video of the demo because we have emulated this environment on a Nexus tab. So this uh, shows a dashboard overview for a lab infra user where in the left panel we can see the different sites that a lab infra user can monitor. Once I put the status of site A as on, the different processes start for this particular site. That is, we can see the usage or the memory is changing, the number of VM processes are changing, and in the graph, we can see the RAM usage in the last one hour. So now I have put the site B also on. So here also the processes keep on starting. This is basically a monitoring dashboard where the user can see what is happening on different site locations. In the next view, I am able to see a detailed view of a specific site or a data center that is Site A, Shinagawa. Here, I, am ab I will be able to perform the migration activity from this dashboard. So uh, once the user selects a particular host, he sees that there are certain uh, resources that are about to reach their thresholds. For example, the threshold value is 85. And so let's see what he does. He selects certain particular VMs who are, have reached the threshold beyond 85. And he wants to perform the migration activity. So for the migration activity to take place, the user has to select a destination site. The migration activity can take place in the same site or a different site. He selects a destination site from the dropdown. Suppose he selects site B. And he starts the migration progress to happen. In this migration process, the VMs that have attained their threshold are being migrated from one host to another or from one data center to another. The third use case that we discussed was regarding scaling activity. So here, uh, this gives an overview of the different requests that I have received on my dashboard for scaling. Some requests have a high priority status marked against them. The user goes and selects the high priority request first. And he wants to scale the host so that the usage or the RAM or the CPUs goes up. In the back end, there are certain APIs we are leveraging from the TCS in-house framework, that is NFE Concerto, which is uh, basically taking care of what are the feasibility checks required for the resources. So this is a scaling process happening for a site A host.
this is all we had for the lab infra users now let's take a look at the demo for a devops user Okay, so this uh, shows a dashboard for a DevOps user. When he has re received certain requests for build activities, these requests are for certain bugs that he wants to get built on certain tools of OpenStack. So the user decides to pick on some of the bugs here. That is the first three bugs so that he can start the build process for these bugs. He starts the build process and what happens in the cycle is for a particular bug that is the first one, there are different tools that are being used for the build activity. So the first one gets ticked here. That means this, uh, the build process for this bug is attained. And the second one is still on with the build request. We can also check out the cycle here that we had clicked on three bugs that were there for the build request. And this is dynamically happening here. When the third bug is also finished, a build cycle is complete. Now we take a different scenario wherein there is a bug which is facing a problem for build request. I have selected two more bugs here. The build process completes for the first one. And in the second one, we'll see what happens. This is a process that is facing an issue while the build process. I monitor it for some time and I see that this is not moving on then I'll take a deep dive into a detailed view of what's happening for this particular bug. And I monitor the build process for only this bug. I can see here, this bug is marked as yellow. That is still, it is pending. And I see here, there is a red mark for the Jenkins tool. That means it is failing at Jenkins. From here itself, I will be able to monitor the issue that is coming up in Jenkins for this particular bug. It says prepare an environment for the run. So I'm able to track the issue that is happening here. And I will be able to uh, log this issue in storyboard as a DevOps user does. Coming to the last use case for a DevOps user, we have the deployment activity. So here we basically see in the left panel, there are certain releases that I want to get deployed on different hosts that are on the right side. The processes are running on different kinds of hosts. I pull a Juno release that is 3.1 and I want to make it deployed on 3.0. And secondly, I want a Kilo 1.6 release on Gamma 1.4 release. Here I start my deployment process. So this is very plain and simple via Service Sentinel. Things are made very easy. The deployment activity, the monitoring tasks, the scaling activities, the migration activities, etc. Now let's see what we have for the general user. As we discussed, a general user will be able to perform the tasks that are offered by the OpenStack service providers. So this gives a basic view of the dashboard for a general user, where he has certain OpenStack news and events coming up on the dashboard. And on the leftmost panel, there are certain vendors that are available for a general user. He can pick on those vendors and decide on the activity.
There are other features as well for a general user, that is Ask OpenStack, attending IRC, there are sharing details, add to favorites, and whatever the products he has subscribed to. The second use case that we were discussing was comparing products of different OpenStack services. So let's see what happens when he clicks on comparing products. A general user will be able to see different OpenStack products and services when he clicks on comparing products. So now he selects two different products. These product details will also be available when he clicks on different kinds of vendors so that they provide the vendor specific products of OpenStack. He has selected two products. He can subscribe to a particular product. Now, when he says compare products, he fetches the details of two products of different vendors or the same vendor along with the feature sets. So this will enable a general user to perform the comparing and filtering activity according to his need. That's all we had from our side. We are open to questions. Thanks, Swati. So we are happy to take your questions. As we mentioned, to summarize, the Service Sentinel is more of a framework which can integrate with any of the enterprise OpenStack uh, versions. And so it's more as it has modularity and extensibility to connect with any of the enterprise customers or products. So any questions, we are happy to take that. Logs, yeah. Control. Which user you are talking about? Archive. Archive. Okay. Logs. So, the, so the question is for uh, any of the users, are we able to access any of the logs, or do we get access to those logs, right? Okay, so uh, for build activities, if you consider the DevOps users, he will be able to monitor different kinds of activities or the tools that are being leveraged for a DevOps user, as I just said. So when he monitors the build activities, he will be able to check out the tools, right? The build activity was failing on one section that was read that time. So there he will be able to find out what is the different problem. There will be a proper link on the dialogue and he can check out the logs from that very end. So while at present we're retrieving only the exception, it will be another line of code, a few lines of code to access the logs and retrieve it back on the dashboard. Yeah. So that's feasible. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any more questions? If not, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.